We should all have a favourite place, a place we constantly want to be turned to. For me it's the Northwest Highlands of Scotland. To most it must look bare, sparse and barren. To me that's the appeal. So I think it's this last bit, it's this last step. So get your left hand in where your right hand is now right. and then re reach round and sort of jam your hand into that crack. Yeah? Yeah. And then just step that final bit. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Getting back to the other thing, of course. Lovely. Thank you, bud. Well, that great mass over there is solvent. That's solvent, That's right. solvent. That, that's the one. That's Sugarloaf Mountain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a landscape that's been reduced to its bare bones, really. Ice, wind and water have been at work over the millennia to leave the skeleton we see today. The land has been ground down and shifted about, leaving the beautiful beaches and superb headlands. The contrast between the detail of the landscape and the broad vistas is amazing. The weather is a major factor though. But if the clouds restrict the view, then you've just got to look harder and closer. When Scottish primrose is supposed to grow then? Eh? When Scottish primrose is supposed to grow? This is actually Red Campion. But we found Scottish primrose where it's supposed to be, at the golf course at Durness. Autumn gentian was fairly widespread, as was yellow rattle on lime-rich grassland. I should expect the lichens are exceptional in the pure air. It's only a sparse place and what you see won't immediately strike you as significant but it has a certain raw beauty and the more you read up about it the more you'll get out of it like the bone caves at Inchnadamp. This is the sort of cave you imagine people living in isn't it? This is pictures of cavemen. Oh, yeah. It's this round arch isn't it? You know? uh -huh. The fire going. Kiddies playing, come together the man driving something long. Skins strewed on the floor. Yeah. 